Welcome to the Eastern Civ Podcast at the Historian's Eye. Please subscribe, and if you'd like to be notified when new episodes are released, click the bell icon. Shea Wang Ti, 259-210 BC, who is also known by many other names, was the first emperor to unify China. The name Shea Wang Ti means first emperor and is a title, not a proper name. The Qin dynasty he founded gave its name to China, and it was he who first initiated the building of the Great Wall and construction of the Grand Canal. He was born Ying Jing, also known as Zhao Jing, of the state of Qin, to a dancing girl named Zhou Ji and King Zhang Zhang of Qin. According to the historian Su Ma Qian, he was not actually Zhang Jing's son, as his mother was already pregnant by a wealthy merchant who brought Zhao Ji to the king. As Su Ma Qian was hostile to Shi Wang Ti, as almost all later writers are, this claim has often been disputed. The young prince grew up in the Qin court and assumed the throne at age 12 or 13, following his father's death. One of the most influential statesmen in Qin was the politician Shang Yang, who developed and codified the philosophy of legalism in advanced total war. Prior to Shang's reforms, warfare was considered a nobleman's game of skill and strategy in which one observed definite rules which cannot be broken. It was common practice to allow an enemy force to mobilize on the field and even to pass into position without molestation. A commanding general did not attack non-combatants and was expected to treat defeated foes with honor. At the Battle of Changping, the Qing employed Shang's ideology to defeat the state of Zhou, but afterwards made little further progress. King Jing, making full use of Shang Yang's philosophies and leading an army of considerable size, swiftly defeated the six other states. He then united the states. Having consolidated his empire, he turned his attention to administration, and with the help of Li Tzu, quote, resolved to base Chinese society not as heretofore upon custom and autonomy, but upon explicit law and powerful central government, end quote. Initially, this government served the people in that Shi Wang Ti policies allowed for substantial building projects and prosperity. He, quote, simplified official ceremonies, issued a state coinage, divided most of the feudal states, prepared for the prosperity of China by establishing peasant proprietorship of the soil, and paved the way for unity by building great highways in every direction from his capital. Traveling in disguise and unarmed, he made note of abuses and disorders, and then issued unmistakable orders for their correction. He encouraged science and discouraged letters, end quote. In all ways, the early Qin dynasty worked to improve the lives of the people. The walls and fortifications which once enclosed the borders of the separate warring states were destroyed, and the Great Wall was begun from their ruins marking the northern boundary of the empire and protecting the land from marauding nomadic tribes. In the south, the Linquad Canal was built to aid in transport and in trade. Weapons of the defeated states were melted down and made into works of art. The time of peace and prosperity, however, was short-lived. In 213 BC, Li Tzu, having grown tired of hearing Confucian scholars criticize the regime by comparing it to the past dynasties of the Golden Age, wrote, Quote, I suggest that the official histories, with the exception of the memoirs of Chen, all be burnt, and that those who attempt to hide other works be forced to bring them to the authorities to be burnt, end quote. Although life during the Warring States period had been difficult, it had given rise to the hundred schools of thought, which comprised writings such as those of Confucius, Moti, Mencius, Ting Shi, and Yang Zhu, among many, many others, maintaining Shang Yang's strict philosophy of legalism as the official policy of the government, which he had instituted at the start of his reign, Shi Wang Ti rewrote the legal codes, suppressed freedom of speech, burned the books, and put to death all that refused to comply. This period of his reign is known as the burning of the books and the bearing of the philosophers. 210 BC, Shi Wang Ti they died on a trip to find an elixir of life which would grant him immortality. Some sources indicate that he died by poisoning after drinking what he thought was an elixir. Li Tzu kept his death a secret. There was an attempt to place Shi Wang Ti, second son, on the throne. Due to the weakness of the son, the oppressed people of China grew bolder and soon began to revolt. Through a series of uprising and rebel alliances, Qin authority was overthrown in the year 206 BC in the capital of Zhangyang. The imperial house was massacred and the Qin dynasty was thus at an end.